It is just shifting from role to role, and it has to be as conscious and as intentional as changing the hats. Hello and welcome to the Remarkable CEO Podcast, a show dedicated to chiropractors who want to transform their job into a business so that they can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. With your hosts, Dr. Pete Camiolo and Dr. Stephen Franson. Welcome to another episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast, Chiropractic's number one business podcast. I'm Dr. Pete Camiolo. And I'm Dr. Stephen Franson. And I'm curious, what hat are you wearing right now? Hey, it's great to be together. And uh, it's awesome that we get to have this platform, Dr. Steven, to just share our heart and also just encourage you as a CEO and a leader. We know being a leader in today's environment, it's, uh, it's wicked hard. And you know it's not for the faint of heart. And so I hope and pray that this podcast, if you're new to this podcast, will just be a source of great encouragement and support to you in your in your leadership journey, in your journey of building a remarkable business. And also, if you're a regular listener, we just want to, again, recognize you for being a part of this awesome, awesome opportunity for us to share every week. Dr. Steven, it's been years now and uh, it never gets old. And I'm just fired up. Even coming in the studio today, couldn't wait for us to get into this uh, into this this week's episode. So uh, great to be together. Today, we're going to talk about specifically the machine. And uh, we're going to come at it from a slightly different perspective, Dr. Steven. So I'm excited to dig in with you today. Yeah, man. So uh, we've all showed up and we have our, we, we have our, uh, our hats on the ready, right? So today, we're going to talk about the different roles that we're blessed to serve. And uh, man, it's just, um, I'm just coming in hot after you know, just been a gr- it's been a great week. You know, so the week started off really strong. Um, this is my favorite time of the year up here in New England. Uh, I'm in New Hampshire and Maine, um, back and forth between our place in Maine in the summertime. So surfing the whole seacoast, right? So, and we've had this awesome week of swell, uh, which is just such a blessing because my family's kind of spread all over the world right now. My uh, my son's gone off to Liberty University for his junior year. And my daughter, uh, Emma, and my wife, Camilla, they were over in Sweden, or they're over in Sweden, um, visiting her mom and dad, her family over there. So I, had, I was an empty nester, Dr. Pete, and God is good. We had this awesome swell come up the coast. So all of this like free time, like I get to decide exactly what I do every minute. And uh, so I got to surf a few times and just got some great waves. So uh, got some vitamin fun. So I'm all charged up. Uh, we had a great webinar last night on the seven figure associate doctor model, which was just extraordinary and so well attended. Uh, we'll probably drop a link in the show notes down below for anybody who might have missed that because that was definitely a uh, a CEO conversation, right? So as we talk about doctors who are in build, who are trying to go to scale, or doctors who are in scale and they find themselves with a, hey, I've hired an associate or associates and I'm just not scaling well, right? So because I'm you know, um, become more complex, but I'm not necessarily more productive and more profitable. If that's you, then that that webinar really is for you. Or the doctors that are in scale who are getting ready to exit, right? That whole conversation. So definitely relevant to this audience. So man, I'm just buzzing, man. I'm flying high. I'm psyched for this conversation about the different roles, the different hats that we wear as business owners, right? So uh, at the end of the day, you know, we've introduced this concept before of the ascensions of a of a business owner, of a chiropractic business owner. Uh, we've talked about going from the owner operator who's working in the business to making the ascension to becoming the CEO, like a new identity, right? So this is a new role. It's a new identity as you move into the scale season of your career, right? So you, you go from working in the business to working on the business, like Michael Gerber taught us in the E-Myth, which is just an awesome book and a must read for chiropractors, right? To recognize that you uh, are making an, an ascension, an identity shift um, that's real. It changes your position. It changes your responsibilities. It changes your perspective, right? So we've introduced this concept of there's actually a third ascension available as well. And it's into the role of being investor, right? So where you're working actually above the business, right? So Dr. Pete, we've said it one way before. We're going to say it a different way today. When you're working in the business as a C, uh, excuse me, as the owner operator, um, you know, you've got this set of responsibilities. 
It's how you spend your time. It's the perspective you need. And it's totally appropriate. You know, this is not a bad thing. It's, of course, you're wearing all three hats, so to speak, every day, every week, every month, right? So, but you need to know that you're actually in the role of owner operator, right? So then you make that shift when it's time to be the CEO, right? So, uh, and you've got to make that shift in, in your mind that says, okay, so in this circumstance, in this situation, in this decision-making process, it's more appropriate that I, um, I'm in my role as CEO and I'm working on the business. And when we talk about working above the business as the investor, you're looking down at the business and recognizing that, you know, from working above the business, I'm making a different set of decisions because I just recognize and I realize that as the investor, my job is to increase enterprise value. My job is to increase asset value. My job and all the decisions that I'm making is ultimately to make this business more attractive to an ideal buyer, right? So as we talk about eventually moving into the season of exit or pre-exit, the investor's job is to say, what decisions do I make today that would make this practice, this business, ultimately more attractive to our ideal buyer, right? So, and the, and the, the, the blessing in this is that does not just create a one day happiness thing because your business is easier to sell and for a higher dollar amount in a shorter period of time with less stress, that's a great win someday. But this is a Monday win because we all know that building it to sell it, right? So is a culture and nobody ever regrets having built their business to sell it because those businesses they're more productive, they're more profitable, they're more fulfilling, and they're more fun. So psych for this conversation today. So I used to go to the mall. I don't go as much, but uh, there was a store I used to love to go to uh, called Lids. And I know it, the store does still exist. Dr. Steven uh, confirmed that for me. Uh, it still does exist, uh, but uh, it is an awesome store. They have all sorts of hats you can find to have for your team and all different types of hats for your team. It's pretty awesome uh, store. If you like hats, uh, go to Lids. And you know, it reminded me of two of my favorite authors in my, you know, business journey. One of them is Michael Gerber. The other one is John Maxwell. And um, both of them have had great influence over me and just my understanding of leadership, my understanding of business, and and just kind of how to navigate uh, both of those things. And um, you know, I remember just studying Michael's work in the E Myth. And, uh, and just understanding the different roles that, you know, you play as an entrepreneur starting a business. And uh, I still remember being up at the lake in Northern Minnesota during the summertime, reading that book when I was in chiropractic school and, and just uh, getting myself ready mentally for, uh, for going into going into practice and getting, getting out of school and into practice. I remember doing that. I remember again, reading John Maxwell's book. There was two things that really stood out to me and, and, uh, and it really kind of culminates with John Maxwell's concept of the law of the lid. And, um, and then Michael Gerber talking about, you know, putting the lid on your practice. And so, you know, my whole thought has always been, you know, if you insist on wearing all of the hats, you're putting the lid on your practice. And that's something that we don't want to do. But yet, there are a few hats that you do need to wear. So while you walk into a store of lids, there's a whole lot of hats you could buy. The question is, what's the hats you should buy? And I'm reminded of this time of the year, a season that we're in for my family, where we're back in the groove, we're back into the sports, we're back into school, it's already happening, you know, we're going full speed. And uh, this year, I'm, I'm functioning in a few different roles in, inside of uh, our family's uh, you know, world of sports. And so I'm going to give you a little snapshot into just one day in my life. It was actually one afternoon. So, uh, so my son, Ryder, you know, he's playing, uh, he's playing travel ball now. So uh, it's, it's official, you know, we decided we're going in, we're going to do the travel thing. You know, we've received a lot of counsel from a lot of people and they talk about, you know, it's a big commitment. It's a financial commitment. It's a time commitment. It's a big commitment, more practices, longer practices, traveling, there's games, there's weekend, there's tournaments, the whole thing. Are you really ready for that? And so we were really prayerful, mindful about it. Ryder's a good ball player. And, you know, we decided to withhold him from that for a few years, just to kind of, we're not going to do that. We're going to do town ball. We're going to keep it local. You know, it's, it's all good there and get him in a lot of different sports. And that's great. Uh, and it's been good, but we decided this year was the time. So, you know, now that we signed up, the, the head coach of the team that forms a team, you know, he said, Hey, what's your availability? And I said, well, you know, I, I'm as a father, you know, I'm going to be there most of the time, but I said, I'm happy to help out. So I, uh, so now I've been recruited and I'm on the field. So now when I, so when I show up to practice now, I actually show up as one of the assistant coaches. I'm not official on like on paper assistant, but I'm an assistant coach. Like 
at practices and I, I have a role to play. So when I show up, I, I, so they gave me a hat, you know, and not, not all the parents get a hat, by the way, you don't get a hat. I, I got a hat because I have a role to play and I show up and I'm an assistant, right? I'm there. I just basically show up and I'm like, all right, y'all tell me what to do. Right. And, and then I, I get told, Hey, you're going to this station. You're going to work on these drills. This is what we need to do here. And that's what I do. And I spend, you know, a couple hours doing that running drills. And I have some a little bit pregame work to do. There's videos we watch in preparation for the practices. There's some awesome training videos that are out there. And I show up and do that. So, so this was a Sunday and I had that. And I had a couple hours of practice. And then, you know, this year I decided that, you know what, I'm going to step up my game. And so I decided to become a head coach for another one of my kids. And so, uh, <laughs> so we had practice as well uh, shortly thereafter. So I uh, quickly ran over to the juice shop, got myself a, a smoothie and uh, headed back to the ball field for the next practice. But the difference on this one is, uh, this is the Ironbirds, this is Jordan's team, I'm the head coach. So with the head coach, it's a different game. You're sending out all the emails to the parents. You're making sure every, all the schedules are updated in, in the app. You're making sure that you're getting the kids' numbers, their shirt sizes, their sizes. You're, you're communicating with the commissioner. You're organizing the practice. You're putting together the practice plan for every practice. You're communicating, you're recruiting assistant coaches. You're recruiting the parents to come onto the field and help. And you're getting all that. Who's going to be here? You're setting up the, the snack, you know, line in, in, in uh, for the snacks for the post games. You know, the, the kids probably favorite part is the snacks part. But, you know, and, and you're, you're, you're going to the coaches meetings with the commissioner and doing things like that. I'm head coach, right? So that's a different role that I play. So I leave one practice where I'm showing up as I'm, I'm here to support. I'm an operator. I'm just here to support. I'm taking direction. And I put on, I feel like now I'm putting on my CEO hat because now I, I got to run this thing. I got to make sure that, you know, we built, a, we built a great team. I had to go to the tryouts. We, we had 250 kids try out. We, we picked our, we dra then we went to a draft and we drafted our top 10. And, and so we built our team and then we, now we meet with the team and, you know, we had some politics going on too, that I had to deal with that with some kids going to get traded. And then we had to deal with some of that. So, you know, all that goes into being, you know, being for me, the head coach, that's the CEO. And so then, you know, after, a, you know, being out on the ball for four or five hours, you know, we go home. And, uh, and then it's like, Hey, it's, it's, uh, it's the evening. We just want to sit back and relax. And so now it's time to, uh, just maybe put our feet up and, uh, enjoy a little bit of baseball and, so, and let, let us be entertained. And so the third, the third team is, is my team and I'm invested in this team because I was born and raised in New Jersey. So, you know, my grandfather, my dad taking me to New York Yankees games and I spent my whole life, uh, you know, just rooting for the Yankees and, and, and here I am now living in Tennessee far from it, but you know what I'm grateful for. You know, now you can watch any game you want. So I get to watch games uh, throughout the year, not just games that are on TV locally like it was when I grew up in the old days. And, uh, and, and so I have my investor hat on, right? Because I'm invested in this team. Like, I actually care about them. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I've been invested for my whole life, actually. You know, I really, really do care. That it means something to me. So I think about this, Dr. Stephen, how in one day, you know, I had three different hats on. I literally came home, probably showered up, and then popped this hat on, you know? And, and I, you know, that, that in many ways is, is how it is for us in, in our, in your role. That's how it is for you. You know, you, you show up on a Monday and it's morning huddle and then it's shift and you're there as Dr. Pete. And then, you know, you know, so that's, you know, that's this hat, right? So I'm, Hey, I'm Dr. Pete, man. Let's go. Let's go. Here we go. And after shift, you know what? I'm having team meeting and I'm showing it to my team meeting. I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm shifting from Dr. Pete to, you know what? I have, you know, I have our team meeting and I'm, I'm helping run that team meeting. I have an awesome manager and I work with my manager, but we got issues that came out of our same page meeting on Friday that was set up for Monday. And so I, I'm just here to, I'm here as a support. I'm here as a member of the team, but I'm also, I am the CEO of this business. So I show up with my CEO hat on today because this is our team meeting, our weekly team meeting. It's, it's where we create focus for the team. And then, you know what, maybe after that you go and you meet with, you know, your, your accountant or your, your financial advisor, your tax you know, strategist. And, and, and then you put on your investor hat and you're starting to think about, you know, what kind of expansion things you're doing, or maybe, you know, you go on your CEO coaching call, your mastermind, and you're working with your, your, your peers on, and you're starting to think bigger, starting to think above your business, starting to say, Hey, I, I, I'm putting, and then you know what, then you're back afternoon shift. Let's go. All right, let's go. And then you're back into the, into the office. And maybe you're serving it because it's Monday and it's one of the days you're in, you're seeing patients all day, morning and afternoon shift. Right. And then then at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're just getting back in to see, oh, hey, I need my reports coming into me. Let's see what's going on with the business. And you're just getting ready. 
You guys feel it? That's that's your life. And so, Dr. Steven, I think this is so important because it, it's it is what's happening. And what we what we are differentiating here today, Dr. Steven, is just the difference between the the ascension of the the operator ascending to the CEO, ascending to the uh, to the investor, but actually how you actually operate in those roles in any given week. And what's cra- uh, you know crazy is. For anybody who's just listening to this and is not watching this, they can't fully appreciate the demonstration that I just got to observe, which was Dr. Pete tearing through a rotation of three different hats. So if you're not watching this on YouTube, this is one you want to go back and absolutely watch on YouTube because it was literally the manifestation, the embodiment of exactly what he's describing is it is just shifting from role to role and it has to be as conscious and as intentional as changing the hats, right? So it's like, why do we resonate with hats? Why for 150 years have we just all resonated with some type of logoed identity on our hats? It's like, it's a great way to let everybody know around you. It's like, hey man, this is this is the hat and I mean business, right? So this is what I am, this is who I am, this is who I stand for, and this is what I'm here to do, right? So um, I loved just seeing that rotation. I thought to myself, as you were going through this, is the ascension does not imply that you get rid of a hat and now you have a new hat and you never pick up that other hat before right? again, right? So um, I love the way I got to watch you taking your hats off and on and putting a hat back on as the calling on your time changed, right? So it's like, what am I responsible to be doing right now? What should I be focusing on now? What are the behaviors that I'm going to be doing now, right? So in other words, what role am I in now as I look at my calendar, as I walk through my day and my week and my month and my year? So guys, as you go through this ascension, you add hats. You don't necessarily get rid of hats, right? So you have to be intentional so that you don't end up trying to wear three hats at the same time, right? So uh, that first hat, that owner operator hat, you will make an ascension to CEO. Eventually, if you're scaling, you'll get a new hat, but you don't get rid of this owner operator hat, right? So you've got your working in the business hat that you'll go back to when you're working in the business and it's wildly appropriate for you to have that hat on, right? So, and then when you start acting like a CEO or when you have CEO responsibilities to tackle, then you take off your owner operator hat and you put on that CEO hat. Same thing when you make that third ascension to the investor position, you get another hat, right? So you don't get rid of the other two hats, you get another hat. So when it's appropriate on your calendar, with your responsibilities, what hat do I need to be wearing now? In other words, what identity do I need to assume to have the best position to be making the the right perspective, to be making the decisions that need to be made for what's gonna serve the business best? Dr. Beat, I love this. I love the visual of it, right? So I hope everybody's watching it on YouTube. If you did not get to see that, go back and check us out on YouTube. Follow us on YouTube. Share the show on YouTube, guys. We just appreciate when you guys pass this around because this is an incredibly valuable and relevant message for anybody who wants to make this ascension, right? So if you're listening to this podcast, you've self-identified as a person who's either, I am a CEO in a chiropractic business or I aspire to be a CEO in a chiropractic business, right? So I hope what you're hearing today is as a COO, what you should recognize is that you, excuse me, as the owner operator, you are the machine, okay? So when you are the owner operator and you are actually in the business, right? Working in the business, um, you are the machine, okay? So when you make the ascension to CEO, the CEO's job is to build the machine. And when you make the ascension to investor, your job is to eventually sell the machine. And you can hear the difference there, right? Like, As the owner-operator, when you are the chiropractor, imagine owner-operator, it implies you are a sole practitioner. You are the only DC in there. You're the only person delivering healthcare. You are the machine, okay? And we all know what happens in any factory that depends on a machine to produce its outcome to be a business, right? So you are the machine as the the owner-operator. Making ascension to CEO, the CEO's job is to build the machine. In other words, as CEOs, we build the systems that make up the machine. We hire, onboard, train, equip, and develop the people that run the machine, right? So, and we bring in associate doctor or doctors to then execute, right? And become the machine 
on our behalf, right? So as the CEO, our job is to build the machine, right? And as the investor, one day in the future, your role, your job will be to eventually sell that machine. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic. And what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, direct message us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Now go and be remarkable. Remarkable.